intro, I'm just really actually a, a massive nerd, um, and I just have always had really nerdy tastes in, in various occult and esoteric subjects, as well as non-ordinary states of consciousness and anything slightly left field, you know, the weirdo stuff. I've always loved the weirdo stuff. I, I didn't prepare anything to say tonight because usually I just like roll from the hip a little bit and I just like allow whatever comes up come up. And so if I think about the book and what my intention was for this book, by the way, it, it takes a long time, like 365 spells. I was like, how many human problems are there to have like <laughs> spells for? And most people, you know, you, you look out there and there's like spells for, I want money and, and spells for, I want love and you know, the obvious material stuff. But it was really great to have to go deep into the, the challenge of the human experience and just really feel into like, what do we need as fellow humans? Uh, you know, what do we want to call in or what do we want to banish? You know, what are, what are the, the, the main issues of, of the, the drama of our, you know, our existence? So it was pretty interesting just from a personal point of view, sitting there with that reality and feeling like, okay, how can I help people uh, with these various things? There's 365 of them, so let's see what can they be. It's also really fun also with this book to work with elemental magic because that's the the foundation of all of the spells is working with the elements and calling them in to help assist your your spell. Now a big part of it too was trying to get people who might be newbies to to a magical cosmology like excited about you know can I make things happen? Do Can I work with universal forces to affect change in my, my world? Can I actually do this shit? And it's like, yeah, of course you can. Um, and the reason why I say of course so is because, you know, the fact that we're even sitting here right now is actually an act of magic. Because, hey, 13.8 billion years ago, uh, something magical happened and it was a single point of heat and light that appeared out of nowhere, out of the void, out of darkness. And from that single point of light that just exploded out of nothing, we had all of the stars, and then we had the Milky Way, and then we had our solar system, and then we had our planet. And then from that single point of light, billions of years ago, we also have us here, our bodies, and we have these books, and these ideas, and we have our mobile phones, and that glass of wine in your hand. So. It's magic. It's all magic. So if that was able to happen 13.8 billion years ago, and by the way, science backs that up, you know? <laughs> so, you know, science backs that up. If that is possible, then anything really is possible. In fact, our, our thoughts and our consciousness are little acts of creation all the time. It comes from the void of the, of where? The void of darkness or dark matter somewhere within us. We could call it our mind, but even with neuroscience, uh, the jury is still out as to where is consciousness, where does it exist. So, each and every one of us have the potential to create something. So, that's what I was thinking too when I made this book. I was like, oh, people need to know, like, yeah, you can do this. You can sit with yourself and do a ritual and bring something in. So, one thing I really was excited about was the fact that I felt inspired by technology as well to cast spells. Um, I really do believe that anything external to you can be an external tool that can help with like a ritualistic magical practice. <coughs> because hey, look, look at the long history of human beings. You know, we've used everything for divination, everything for spell casting, from the casting of bones to stones to like scrying in pools of water to coffee grinds and tea leaves and, God, what else, Car tarot cards, you know. We've had external c tools all throughout history that help us mirror what's happening in the inner worlds, what's happening in the realms of consciousness and the higher states of consciousness through these tools. So I was like, hey, I gotta bring tech into this, of course, because now we have these new tools called mobile phones and I've always done this. I, I've always likened the mobile phone to a scrying mirror. Have you ever noticed 
oh, now it's turned on. But have you ever noticed when it's black, totally blacked out? If any of you have a scrying mirror, like especially a black obsidian scrying mirror, it's, it's pretty wild. It's almost like a, an ancient mobile phone. So um, in my uh, witchcraft uh, classes, um, I, my students make scrying mirrors, and you know, it looks like a black screen ready for some sort of information to come through. Yeah. Of course, with, um, uh, with doing divination, it comes through. It's almost like a, a projection of what's going on in the realms of your consciousness projected onto the black screen. But now we've got our mobile phones that se seemingly do it for us. Um, tech is science that works. It's magic that works, right? So anyway, I've designed some tech spells in the book that I'm really excited about which you can use your mobile phone for. And with these tech spells, it's super easy. You could do it on the go as long as you bring yourself into like a state of awareness and recede into the primacy of, of the present moment and connect to your, to your potential and to your magic and then cast your spell through your phone. And I'll show you at the end of this, um, we'll all do one together. And I was really encouraged last night, someone got in touch with me and said, Dree, I, can't believe this, I did one of your tech spells last, last night, and it worked. And she sent me her process. She did one of the tech spells uh, so that her ex will get in touch with her. <laughs> and of course people yeah. end up doing that. Hey, it's one of the human conditions, right? <laughs> will my ex get back in touch? I love them, still. I still feel for them. So anyway, she, said, she sends me like, the screen grab of her, of her spell. So that particular spell, it's very easy. You can do it on the go. And it's literally, and it, so you get your phone out and you, you prepare to text a message to yourself. So this comes back to you in your own feed, in your own thread on, on your text messages. And so she texted the spell. The spell is effectively an image of your ex. It was an image of her ex and underneath the word communication and she sent it out with her intention to the universe through the ether through the Wi-Fi and it came back to herself and the very next day her ex gets in touch and so she sends me his message and this is a person she hadn't heard from in years and the message was like hi I am. I hope you don't mind me reaching out. You've been on my mind. <laughs> I just wanted to check in, uh, do a check in, see how you are. And she, so she sent me that screen grab and then she wrote, I'm absolutely shook. And I was like, yeah, you're the magic, but you're the magic. It's wonderful. You're the magic. So we all have great potential and these tech spells, I hope you, you have fun with them. They're good fun. Now, I've been using um, the mobile phone for lots of various reasons in terms of a magical practice. Um, and so I'm going to just guide you through one that I do. Um, it's not in the book, but this is something that you can do like every day or any day or whenever you feel like it. And it's, it's kind of like an initiation spell in, in a way, I think. And effectively, what it is, is starting a dialogue with the universe so it is simply hey universe hi let's talk so it's like a invitation to the universe and you can do it in different ways so sometimes i'll i'll ask for something specific like for example recently i've been doing lots of shadow work and in Jungian psychology, shadow work is, is, is moving through the, the wounded and repressed aspects of yourself, the darkest side of yourself, Pain. your trauma. And, uh, you know, Pluto's moving retrograde through Capricorn right now, so it's like really hardcore shadow work, right, till October 10th. Sorry, I'm a triple Scorpio, so it's like, oh, that's really pulling at the, the, the Plutonian shit. But anyway, um, so I, I sent out a message to the universe. Can you, can you please affirm my shadow work trajectory? Because I keep feeling like these symbols around me. One of them is the owl, and that's the reason why I got this made, to help me through the shadow work. And then as I sent out that message to the universe, please affirm my shadow work trajectory. I wanted to feel like I wasn't alone in the shit. You know what I mean? Like walk around like, am I, am I crazy? Or is this, am I really doing this stuff? And sure enough, as soon as I sent that message out and it came back to me, you know, walking around in my environment, the synchronicities start to unfold. Owls, 
everywhere, coming, coming in different ways, coming in different ways. From walking past a, a, a bookshop and there's an owl book in the window and taking a photo of that, send it back to myself in that thread. Then I'm walking down the street and oh, there's a, a billboard with an owl, take a photo of that, send it back into the thread. So you see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm developing this relationship, this conversation with the universe. And the universe ends up speaking to us through the synchronicities in our environments. And it can be really encouraging when you are needing something in your life or you need something to signpost for you, you need something with a decision making, or you just want to have a little bit of a cosmic giggle. It's, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. So what I'm going to do now is we're all going to if you fancy, there's, there's no pressure at all. If you're like, that's so whack, forget about it. That's cool too. So you could just not do that. Do it if you don't want to. But if you're into it, um, get your mobile phones out. And what I'll do first is, uh, you, we can hold your mobile phones. I'm just going to guide you through just a little... A little meditation it's not gonna be too hippie ish it's just gonna be a little meditation just to bring you into the present moment because I think it's important before we do these sort of things to center center into the primacy of the now in us and then to connect to that that potential of creation that comes out of the void of darkness so you can feel into this any way you want. If it feels nice to close your eyes, you can do that. Or you can have a soft gaze, or if you're not into it, you can just sit there and scroll on Instagram, whatever you want. Right, okay. So we're landing, landing into this present moment. So if you want to start by connecting to your breath, so we're gonna draw in a nice deep breath in through the nose, draw that in all the way up. Release through the mouth. And continue to connect to your breath this way. Just drawing all awareness into the sensation of the breath moving in. And on the exhale, allowing yourself to you know, release a, a thought that's not serving you or a feeling or a tension. And just continue to bring all of your awareness into the stillness of this present moment into the stillness of the possibility of creation. So just allowing yourself to float in the void. You can even bring your awareness to the place just behind your closed eyelids. If you can imagine there's a chair or a seat just behind the bridge of your nose and your consciousness is just sitting there on that comfy seat looking out into the infinite void, the infinite space, the blackness of potential just behind your closed eyes. Now in this space of observation, of, of looking into the void, allow yourself to connect to the question that you want to ask the universe. It could be anything at all. Anything that you want to start a dialogue with, or it could just be simply wanting to start the conversation with the universe. But allow yourself to find the words. <coughs> and now retrieving the words, allow yourself to take a nice deep breath in again. Just breathing in the potential of the possibility of these words. And then on the exhale, allowing yourself to come back down into the physicality of the present moment and bring awareness back into sitting here in the room with your eyes open and then now move to your mobile phone and find your messages and start to compose a message to yourself so and the way you do that is you you go to two and you just type your name in and you'll see that your name will come up and there will be a thread there that you can start for yourself and and put that statement in that you want to ask the universe and when that statement's been texted in allow yourself to feel the excitement of the possibility of the conversation coming through in so many different synchronistic ways and holding on to that energy of excitement which is important because that energy helps fuel this as well 
and openness helps to fuel possibility. Allow yourself to press send and send it without attachment. Allow it to send in a way where you are feeling the joy of the potential without any attachment to outcome, without any overthinking. And allow that text to come back to you in your inbox. Now, the next part of the task is just to remain open. We live in an incredible world, an incredible multiverse. So as you move through your environments, and it's good to have this without non-attachment. Don't feel like you're obsessively looking everywhere for something. It's good just to be, you know, remain present with it, whatever your environment uh, has for you and, and see what unfolds for you. It can be different for everybody. It could be something that comes through visually. It could be something that's literally like, a song or words or you know a person uh, an email you never know so just leave yourself open for the possibility have fun with this conversation with the universe because it, it keeps unfolding so your next task is whenever the thing comes through and multiple things may come through uh, document it so if it's something visual take a photo send it back to yourself in that thread if it comes through online you can do a screen grab and send it to yourself through that thread. If it's something that you read, a headline, a screen grab, or if it's a person, a photo, and then just continue the thread. And I encourage you to just keep, keep going. So even after that uh, conversation peters out, you might want to send out another question or message to the universe and then just keep going. It's really cool because when you go back, especially if you're having a shit day, you can like go back and read and look at this interesting timeline and it can really cheer you up and it can make you feel yeah there's more to this and you know let's do this let's let's keep living a magical life like this is amazing and watch it go from strength to strength it's absolutely interesting how it just expands and grows just like the universe did 13.8 billion years ago expanded it's still going it's still expanding and that's how it is for our magical experience day to day too. So thank you everyone. Stay uh, magical and hope to see you around in here and maybe sign some books. <coughs> thank you.